Adding color to the elements on your web page is an essential part of anyone's workflow. And in this movie, I'm going to show you how to add both fills and strokes to the objects that you create inside of Muse. So what we're going to do is just select any one of these shapes that we have here on screen. And then when you have that shape selected, look up here in the options bar and you're going to see things like fill and stroke right across the top. To change the fill, you can simply drop down this little button right here, and that's going to allow you to either pick one of the default swatches over here to the right, or custom mix your own using these RGB sliders over here to the left. And so if I wanted to choose a new color like red, I could just click that, and it's automatically going to change. You'll see here also that the RGB values change, including this one right here, which is 255, meaning maximum amount of red, zero for green and zero for blue. And then, of course, we have a hex code value there as well, which is what web browsers use to determine the color of whatever object we have selected. Now, when I click away from this, I'm able to then see the rest of my document. And if I want to change the stroke color on this, and by the way, stroke just means border. If I want to change that, I come up here and I can go ahead and manipulate the stroke. So let's add something like a dark blue stroke and then let's increase the size of the stroke by clicking up a few times on the stroke weight, just like that. Now let's select another shape and let's take a look at some of the other fill and stroke options that we have available to us. This one's just basic. Now let's step it up a little bit. Let's go over here to the fill, and instead of clicking on just the swatches, click on the actual word fill. This is going to expand the options a bit and give you the opportunity to fill this with either a solid color or a gradient. It also controls the opacity. You can set the color, and you can also specify an image if you choose. So in this case, what if I wanted a gradient? If I choose that, it's going to allow me to select both the colors. So I can say, okay, I want this gradient to go from red to let's say orange, something like that. I can also say the focal point is about 30%. You can see there that the focal point actually changes as I drag this slider, making it easy for me to control that, which is kind of neat. Then I can also change the direction, vertical or horizontal. And of course, I can also change the size of this as well. I'm just gonna say automatic to have it stretch automatically across. And then when I want to, I can click fill again, and that closes it up. For the stroke, I can click the word stroke, and I have the ability to control not only the color and weight, but I have the ability to change where the stroke is aligned, either to the center, inside, or outside of the object. So let's choose inside, and then let's increase the size of the stroke. You can see now that the stroke is actually being applied inside of the shape, whereas this one, if I were to click on this shape over here, you can see that it is actually in the center. So some of it is outside and some of it is inside. You can change the look just by doing what I just showed you. Let's go back into the stroke panel now, and let's uncheck the link right here. I can actually control the border of each individual side once I break that link. So I can say, okay, the top, I only want that to have a three pixel stroke. The bottom, I want that to have, let's say a five pixel. And the right, I want that to have about a two pixel. And the left, I want that to have a two pixel. So I can control all of those separately. And when I click away from it, outside of here, you can actually see. So there's a little bit thicker on top, big on the bottom, and really thin on the sides. Now, it's up to you how you use this and why you would want to do that, but there are several different cases where this would make sense. I just wanted to show you how you could do it so that if you ever have a need, you know where it's found. All right, let's go ahead and experiment a little bit more. Let's change the fill and stroke for all three of these objects down here at the bottom. So I'll select this circle here and just go ahead and give it any kind of fill you want. Adjust the stroke any way that you want as well and increase the weight of the stroke quite a bit so that you can see it a little better. Same thing for this circle down here. I'm gonna increase the size of the stroke a few times change the color of the stroke, and then manipulate the fill, just getting an idea of how this works. And then finally, for this one down here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on fill, and then I'm going to change the opacity this time. So I'm going to step the opacity back to about 60%. And then we're going to choose something like red. And you can see when I do that, that the opacity actually makes it look a little bit lighter than the actual red that it is. But to make sure it's truly transparent, I'll take this and move it. And you can see now, since it's on top of everything, that I can actually see straight through it. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the stroke, and we're going to make that none. So here's how we do that. Make sure it's selected, click right here, and then choose this box. It's white with a red line through it. That just means no stroke. 
And when I click away, there you go. All right, so hopefully now we have a better understanding of what fills and strokes are and how we can manipulate them on our objects inside of Muse. And hopefully this kind of sparks your creativity so that you can have some ideas brewing on what you want to do on your own projects.